Good morning everyone. I just thought I'd stop by and kind of show you my summer makes and also what I'm going to try to work on today real quick. Haven't got all the markings on my dress yet. Been busy. Uh, had my procedure yesterday and everything went fine and now I have surgery next week so everything will go fine there too. So has anyone told you you're special today? If not, let me be the first. And here's the summer make. I got this fabric from Hobby Lobby. Not real pleased with it because when I washed it, I got all them little bumps on it. So I had to shorten it. The neckline was pretty big. I need to do one of them adjusted necklines. So what I did, I just kind of cut it up back and sewed it, sewed it in the back. So this was the pattern for this blouse. Um, it is a stitch. Easy Stitch and Save McCall's 9094. 9094. And I did the uh, top with that. Well, I did both of them actually. The one with showing the uh, holes in the shoulders. So I did that one too. I'll have to show that at another time. And then I made um, a pair of pants. And I'll try them on for you. And it's this pair right here. And this is a Simplicity 1808. And it's the shorts, but it's a pair of pants, and I use that color. So I'll stop this, try them on, and let you see them. These are the pants from Simplicity 1808. And I don't know that you can see it real good, but right here. I'll get it right, right there. Fairly easy to make. They have pockets, a tie, waistband in the back. I made these out of some polyester type of fabric. But I made these about five years ago when I made my tunic. I was trying to sew all my clothes and made a jacket, but I did not keep the jacket. They're straight leg. Hope you can see it. And now for the dress that I made this summer. This does not have a pattern because this was just fabric that I bought at Joann's. I think it was like $25 a yard, half price. And so what I did, I bought a yard and a half, and I just kind of sewed it straight up the back, and I kind of like, well, of course it'll fall off of me, but so I made, I used some of the extra wishing, you know, the elastic. I used that for the sleeves and the extra fabric. I just kind of cuffed up and made a, made a cap for it so I'm kind of covered up on my shoulders at least but very comfortable easy easy make no pattern just buy it all all together with the wishing on top and just buy a little extra so you can make a nice strap to help cover your bra up and then I wanted a jacket so I tried to make a jacket and I'm not real happy with this um, not happy how it turned out at all, but this was the jacket, and I need to get the button put on still, so big buttons. I don't know if I'm going to do with different colored, colored buttons or put one in back, but see, I think it rides up too far in the, in the back. Cute pattern, but... I don't know. I don't know that I would be comfortable in it, but it does need the buttons yet. Either big white buttons or colorful buttons or... But this was Pattern Simplicity, uh, 1809, and, uh, oh, I don't know if this was it. Nope, I don't, I don't think this was it. I will have to look for it. I thought this was it. Um, so that's that's the wrong pattern for that but yeah
Yeah. Doesn't look so bad like this, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to wear it around the house for a while and see. And correction, this is the pattern for the jacket with the big buttons. So, the line drawing. And it's Simplicity 1797. Simplicity 1797. And the tunic that I did was this one I did wore the other day. Simplicity 2371. I am going to make a Christmas pillowcase for my granddaughter. Uh, she likes kitties. I was going to try a table topper, but um, not enough fabric. So I'm going to turn it into a pillowcase. An embroidery or name on it. So first step, the cuff part, uh, I cut that out the width of the fabric and 11 inches. So, and I found this little idea from uh, Donna Jordan, Jordan's Fabrics, where you take a little weight and set it up there and really helps hold it down there. So, so I'm cutting this 11 inches by the width of the fabric. Line it up. Make sure it's all lined up and cut away. I've already cleaned up my edge. So there's the cuff, 11 by width of fabric. And for the body of the pillowcase, I cut it 27 inches. 27 by width of the fabric. It's down just a tad. Get it all lined up here. Seven inches then the little trim I do this you can do it three inches, two and a half inches. Depends on how big you want your trim. I feel like I'm getting a little cold coming on. Not good. Two, three, so that would give an inch. I don't want that. I'm going to cut mine two inches because I don't like a lot to show. By the width of the fabric. Width of the fabric. Lined up. So what I do is I get them all lined up and even, and then I cut them all at once. And usually you want to cut it to 21, maybe to 22, but I see my fabric's not quite that long. So I'm going to go by the shortest one, and that is my cuff fabric, and I see it's only 20. 
So it's going to be a little skinnier pillow, but that's okay. So I line it all up. Get her lined up. And then I cut them all at once. And you know, even though I do get them all lined up and cut it like this, it seems like one of them is always longer than the other one. So I don't know. Don't understand that. All right. Next step is you take your cuff and get some pins. I see I have no pins over here. Let me grab some pins. So my next step is you lay your cuff out. Okay, uh, you lay it all out. The cuff goes down first. The fabric goes on next. You make sure if it's a directional fabric that it's facing upward. Then you put your trim on top of that. And I add a few pins just to hold it in place. So when I do the rolling, and these aren't very sharp pins. So I get it all, all pinned down just a little bit, just so I can get it for it to stay put. And then I roll it from the other end all the way up. Bring that up to meet all the ends together. And tack them down. I'm going to serge all the way down this edge. What's going on? Sounds better. It's not staying even. So it surged. Right, so now we set our seam. And then we reach our hand in here and pull it out. Give it a nice little press. And then before I sew the sides, I usually like to top stitch my little decorative trim down.
then I'll probably embroidery her name on, on the green part, red. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just do a top stitch right, right above the white here. It's all surged. And what I like to do with my surged ends is uh, get this big needle type thing. And I thread it. Get it threaded. This isn't the one I usually use. And I put the threads back in on the serge. So when they, they just don't come out as easy. Then I'll just clip that. And I'll do that to both ends. So what we do now is we press our seams really good after you serge. So I've already done that. So we're going to turn the pillowcase inside out. Get them seams or them corners out real nice. Give them a good press so they know where they're going. Good press. Here's the finished pillowcase. I will embroidery her name up on top in red. But I think that turned out pretty nice. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial on making a magic pillowcase. Or and if you have any ideas for anything you would like to see me make or attempt to make, just leave me a comment below. And I want to thank you for joining me today. You guys have a blessed day. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.